Today, we're going to be unbreaking a Sonato D1. Hey guys, it's Josh with the WL Tech Blog. In today's video, we've got a Sonato D1 that we're going to brick, then we're going to unbrick it, and you can do the unbrick part at home. Now we've got a brick device. This will work on either of the Sonato D1 models. We're going to come over here to the Thingino installers repo. So in the Sonato D1 repo, there are two images here. There's a T23 and a T31. Now you should have already gone through this process when installing Thingino, but we'll go ahead and do it real quick on cam so you can be sure. So here we've got our D1. All right, so in order to determine which one you have, you just have to pop the top off of here and look inside. So this one doesn't require any tools for this step. All you do is you just stick your finger in right here at this edge, give a little pull. And then the whole top pretty much will pop right off. Now we're going to look inside the camera. Just to make this a little bit easier for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and pop this out. But you won't have to do this yourself. You should be able to see it just fine. All right, and now we've got the whole board out. All right, you can see, if you look closely, this chip says Ingenic, and it says T31. Now, the T23, the board layout's exactly the same, and the only real difference that you care about is that you get the right firmware image for this. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Let's go back over to our browser. So we go to the T31 in our case, you may have the T23. And once you get up there on the far right, there is a link to download the raw file. So we're gonna go ahead and click that and browser will download it and save. Now we're gonna pop our SD card in and that's recognized. We're gonna come over to Raspberry Pi Imager. You can also use Rufus. I like Raspberry Pi Imager. And for the operating system, we're going to come down to Use Custom, and you're going to pick your Sonato D1 image. Going to choose Storage, pick your SD card. We're going to hit Next. Okay, and we do not want to apply OS customizations, and we do want to continue. So this is a 128 megabyte image will only take a moment to write. Good to remove the SD card. All right, now I'm gonna pull a couple more wires on my cam just so you'll be able to see it better for the next steps. This is just for the camera. You won't need to do this on yours. All right, again, the two chips that are interesting on here, we've got our processor, and then we've got our flash chip next to it. Now, if you look at the flash chip, you'll see there's a dot right here. That dot denotes the location of pin one on the camera. So what you do is you look at dot for pin one and you count counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, what we need to do is we're actually gonna be bridging the pins between pin five and pin six. So that's caddy corner from the dot. Now, before you do that, I recommend that you plug your power cord into the camera and have it unplugged on the other end. It's going to be a lot easier when you only have two hands to plug this guy into the source than to plug this one into the camera. So go ahead and pop in your SD card. It only goes in one way. Now, you didn't take yours out, so to access the SD, you just rotate the head of the thing up and pop it in and then we come right back here now the trick here is and i have to do this a little bit blind but i've done this many times we're going to bridge these two pins i'm going to use my phillips screwdriver you can use anything conductive and we've got the sd card inserted we've got this side of the power plugged in 
So we've got these pins bridged and we're going to plug in the power wire. We're going to wait about one and a half seconds and we're going to remove our short. So what we're doing is we're preventing the startup sequence from seeing this flash chip. When it's not able to see that, it'll go to its backup methods, which are looking for a uh, cloner software running and connected to the USB port, which this cam doesn't even have. And then it'll go to the SD card and look in a special spot. So here we go. I'm going to plug in the power cord on three. I'll plug it in one, two, three. And then one second later, we remove the screwdriver. Now that's all you have to do, but we're going to wait and make sure everything comes up. And of course I've unplugged one of my motors. So we're only going to hear this one when it goes. But it's a fairly quick process. It's not a large flash chip on here. And it takes about a minute or so. If you got it, it'll do everything automatically. If your timing was wrong, then just rewind the video and do it a second time. It can be a bit tricky if it's your first time doing it. I usually get it on my first try. But if you heard that, that was the IR cut. And you see this motor has moved. So it's doing the sweep. Now let me reassemble this. We're going to be right back to provisioning. All right, I should cover reassembling the lid on here. It really just pushes on and make sure you've got the line straight. And then just a little pressure, it'll pop right on. Go ahead and boot this guy up. It should be all ready to go. So we go into our Wi-Fi list and we look for a network that starts with thing. Which is right up here. Go ahead and connect to that. Depending on what kind of device you're on, It'll prompt you to log in and it may or may not take you to the provision page. On my phone with the current version of the phone operating system, it'll actually fail to load the provisioning page. So in that case, what you do is you open your web browser and you go to 172.16.0.1. That will take you to the Thingino provisioning page. Can you go ahead and Put in our root password and our Wi-Fi credentials. Again, make sure on this camera you're giving it credentials for a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. And remember the SSID and password are both case sensitive. It'll take you to a verification page where you can make sure you've got everything right. And then it'll show you your end result page here. It's gonna write a few settings to the camera then the camera will reboot. So give it just a second to do that. All right, now the camera went through its sweep. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the button and it'll read off its IP address. IP address is 192.168.82.113. All right, and our D1 is back online on our Wi-Fi and we are good to go. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure to put them down below. I would appreciate a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to get a better cam, check out the links down in the video description. I've got my favorites down there. If you're interested in the Thingino project and want to hang out with the team, we're over on the Hackers Homestead Discord. The link for that is down in the description as well. Hope to see you in the next video. Until then, stay fresh, cheese bags.